we now get to reign and we now have the power and the authority through Christ and his Holy Spirit to say no to ourselves and to sin. Verse 18, therefore, so because of that true, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness, the cross, leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, many is translated all in other places, it just means everyone, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be righteous. Who are the many that are righteous? Those who will receive. The people that receive it. See, the thing is, God loves people, right? And he loves relationship. He created you for that. That's why you have an eternal soul. That's why you were created to be able to appreciate music and poetry, botany, animals, whatever, you know, whatever your interests are, nature-wise. Because you were created to appreciate and to be able to dialogue about God's creation. So that is, it's funny because when, we, when you meet someone and you develop a relationship some, with someone, most of the time, typically, there's, you have something in common. Even if the thing that you have in common about is that you like to disagree about stuff, right? You still have that in common. And so you become, you dialogue with people and you grow in your relationship because that person is interesting to you, but you're talking about something. And so God creates this world, you know, for Adam and Eve in this garden and he sets them there and they're tending it and they're, you know, doing whatever, you know, bonsai they want to do. I don't, you know, I don't know what went on in the garden, but, but they're doing it. And then it says that he took walks with them in the cool of the day. In fact, that's how he kind of shows up on scene when they're hiding, trying to sew fig leaves together because they're naked. He showed up for their daily walk. And some, however the eternal God narrows himself to be in a position to walk with human beings, he showed up to see them. Isn't that kind of wild? They didn't show up to see him. I mean, that may have happened. We don't read about it. But he showed up to see them. And he asked them, where are you? It's not because he was ignorant, like, oh, are you in here? Like, what's going on? You know, he's, he, it's an eternal call. It's a, it's, a, it's a kind of a hyperbolic statement, like, where are you, Adam? What's happened? Where's our fellowship? Where's our walk? Show me the trees you trimmed. What did you build? Do you have, like, Disney characters? What do you got going on today, Adam, right? God was interested in them. And it's them, it's us that, had, that hid from him because of sin. And that's, what, that's what death is. Death isn't just you cessation of life. It's not that you stop breathing because of sin. That does happen, and it will happen. But it's literally a separation. That's the idea, that we get separated from him. And from the very beginning, sin always separates. But what he wants is relationship. And so we we're reading about what's happening, what's happening here. The trespass led to condemnation for all men, but the act of righteousness leads to justification and life. It's fellowship. Justification. You've been justified. You've gone before a judge, and they said, no, not only are you innocent, but you were right in what you did. It literally, that's what happened. It's, that's why we say things like the exchanged life, or maybe you've heard of like the exchanged church. It's a biblical word that, be, that basically means we exchanged our broken lives and Christ gave us his. We we're like, here's all our garbage. And he said, hey, great. Here's an amazing life. Here's eternal life. It's a quality of life that supersedes and is above our life. Right? That's the exchange that he made. So then he goes on and he says, for, all, as, excuse me, for as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Now, verse 20, so he's changing gears again. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he's, now he's addressing something else. So why did the law come in? If we were all going to die anyway because of sin, if it was easy to show that sin is sin and it always destroys, why the law? What was the point of the law? And he mentions this a few different times. In this case, he points out, he says, the law was there to make sin increase, which seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? The law was there to make the sin abound. So what the law came in to do when God sat down and he said, I'm going to write this out for you guys. 
Don't covet your neighbor's wife. Don't murder people, right? A few simple things, really. Don't make a bunch of pictures of other things and then begin to worship them. You know what's funny? Like, idolatry never changes. You ever notice that? Like, back in the day, and you can see all the, uh, you know, when they uh, exhume different uh, tombs and so forth, or when they, they do archaeological digs, and they always have, like, you're like, why is everybody, like, really chunky with super exaggerated features? I don't know why. But, you know, they always have these, these crazy-looking idols, right? And then, and then they'll, they'll find, like, different uh, uh, inscriptions and little tablets and things like that. Everybody worshipped these things, these false gods, for the same reasons. That's the crazy thing about idolatry. Prosperity. Moloch, right? Moloch. You know why you sacrifice your, your kid to Moloch? You know why you, you put the, they, you, they had a brazen altar and it was a, an open belly and they would fill it with fire? And as a new mom, you take your firstborn child and you sit your kid right on the burning arms of that thing and you watch it burn to death. That was Moloch. That was kind of a standard thing. You know why you did that? Prosperity. More crops, better fertility, right? Why do we slay our young today in America? I don't want, I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to interrupt my, my, uh, my life. I have my right, and my right says that I'm going to keep making money in the way I could make money before. I'm willing to slay my child so that I can keep making money. I mean, it never changes. You know, you, you can, you, we, you, they, they have the goddesses of sex and different things like that, fertility. Why do you give and give and give? We do. This. You, ever, you, ever, you ever seen like a little kid? I remember, I remember as a boy, I, uh, and, and maybe a lot of different kids had this, I don't know. But remember when you could buy like posters before phones? Do you guys remember posters? I don't know if they still have posters or not, but remember you would like go to a store? Remember that? <laughs> like you would get on a bus and then you would drive somewhere and then go to a store and there were other people at the store, right? And then, and then you had to like look for what you wanted. Remember that? <laughs> It was crazy. I mean, it was a wild, crazy day back then. So you go to the store, and you would see, and they have these things rolled up. Remember, it's paper? Remember paper? And it would be rolled up and in plastic, and there would be like this big thing you look through for what poster you want, right? And, and it would it, be like, I don't know, I don't know what, if, if women did that or not, but, but men did, or boys did, and you get like cars or G.I. Joe pictures or something like that, right? And then you take the poster, and you put it up in your room, and it was like the goal in life. I will have this car. Someday I will have this car. I mean, I never was like, oh, you know, but I paid homage to it. I'll get a job. I'll get this car. I love this car. You know, whatever it might be. Like, we never change. We pay homage to the things we love. Like, idolatry, they never, ever change. It's crazy how that works. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know how I got off on that, but... <laughs> um, so the law increased, oh, that's why, because of the law. It, showed, it increased to show transgression. The law was given to God to mercifully say, here you go, guys, this is how jacked you really are. This is righteousness. It seems like it should go without saying, you should not covet someone else's wife. That, I feel like that should not have to be a thing to say, but it is, and our culture dictates that. Do you know in the law, and again, I'm not trying to get crass here, in the law, Levitical law, it says don't have sex with animals. Do you know why? Because we do. Because we do. Does that seem like something that should have to be said? You would think not, right? But we become so depraved that we do that. How do we get there? You know what's interesting about pornography? Is that they estimate, there's a, there's a secular, I don't know why you would sit down and do this, but... I guess I'm glad to have the research, I guess. There's secular research being done that they say about 70% of pornography has violence towards women in it. 70%. Whether it's verbal or physical abuse. And here's the interesting thing about, about sex and pornography. It generates a dopamine release, right? That's like all, all human beings at a base level, all we're looking for is dopamine. Honestly, that's all we're looking for. You know what methamphetamine does? It causes dopamine to get puked out of your brain. That's what it does. See, all these drugs that we, that we take, it's to get a dopamine release. Like when we say, like, I love exciting sports or people that do parachuting, you know what happens? Giant dopamine dump in their brain. Sex, giant dopamine you know, dump in your brain. Fun movie, small dopamine dump into your brain. 
it's all to get there. That's why we feel happy. It's why we feel those things we do, because it's a, it's a dopamine release. That's, that's what happens. And so we as human beings, we're on, on this constant desire and, and uh, I don't know, track to have that done, to, to, to feel that, uh, that, that gigantic high. And so the law comes in, and all of a sudden it shows us that the way that we're doing these things becomes so destructive. So with pornography and the dopamine, what happens is, especially in men, but it can be in women too. Right now, last I read, which was probably about six months ago, 37% of women admit to regularly looking at pornography, and 70% of those 37% say they've tried to stop and they can't. Okay? The number for men is 67%, and 70% of them say they've tried to stop and they can't. But see, what happens when you watch pornography, if it involves violence, you actually train your brain. You develop neural pathways, and you mix dopamine dumps with violence. You literally train yourself to enjoy sexual violence against women, or women generally train themselves to enjoy violence against them during sex. It's just the truth. And so we have to be so careful, you know, how, how we do these things. The law comes in to show we're messed up. And it's mercy. It's mercy when a doctor comes to you and says, you have cancer. Now let's deal with it, right? Hopefully you don't get angry when a doctor comes and says, you have this issue with your body. Now we want to fix it. You don't go, I can't believe you're such a loser for telling me that. How could you tell me that? Forget you, I'm going to another doctor. None of us would say that's a healthy response to a doctor, right? We go, oh, okay, this sounds bad. How do I get that out of wherever it is? How do I get that out of my lungs? How do I get that out of my liver? How do I get that out? So the law comes in to say, you have spiritual destructive cancer. It's going to kill you because it's merciful so that we can say, how do I get that out? How do I not respond in that way? How do I not go down these roads? How can I do that? And so the, Paul says, look, the law comes in, and this is why it came in, is to cause sin to abound. But here's the promise that comes with that. Grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm.